beautiful day. 80 degrees, sun at times, and clouds to cool it. But right now, bright sunshine. Colin Barber set to kick, and Sean Carson waits back deep. Carson, it's like he misjudged a little bit, went over his head, and they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. Connor Shaw, a Georgia native out of Flowery Branch, which is only about 35, 40 minutes from here. And he has done well, except against ranked teams on the road. Yeah, that, that's kind of the hurdle that he's hoping to overcome in this ball game. Great leadership skills, great toughness, really like the way he plays the position. And Georgia has to be very aware of him as a runner, not just on design runs, but scrambling out of the pocket if it's not there down the field. He's actually their leading returning rusher with Marcus Lattimore now in the NFL. First down, first snap for the Gamecocks from the 25. And it's Mike Davis, and uh, now it's Connor Shaw. A nice fake. And Shaw goes out for a first down immediately. Just what Todd was talking about. So we take a look at our impact players. Mike Davis had a sensational outing last week, including a 75-yard touchdown. Bruce Ellington was a little bit banged up. I think he'll be a bigger factor today. For Georgia, Jordan Jenkins trying to be Jarvis Jones, who just needs to be Jordan Jenkins. And Josh Harvey Clemens having him back in the secondary after a one-game suspension should help Todd Grantham's back in defensively. So one snap, one first down. 13-yard pickup for Shaw. It's first down at the 38-yard line. And now they switch in to the shotgun with the fullback leading the way. And this is Davis in the hole and a power run of about four yards before Ramik Wilson wrapped him up. Clemson ran the ball pretty well last week against this Georgia defense. A lot of new starters playing in that first game. A couple of true freshmen. Tackling was a bit of an issue last week at Clemson. So one thing that Mark Rick did in, in response, they put full pads on both Tuesday and Wednesday of this week and tackled, dropped, took guys to the ground two days this week, hoping that that would help against the South Carolina team. Second down and seven. Motion man, Demir Bird. And now sets up trips to the left of Connor Shaw. His first throw is going to be deep. He's got a man out there and just overshot Bruce Ellington. Ellington had a half step and Shaw a little too much on it. And that was one of those true freshmen that started for the first time, Brendan Langley. You know, a lot of guys, in fact, Georgia set a school record having 13 guys that came in and rolled early. We're here in January, went through spring. Langley wasn't one of those guys. He came in in August right from high school inserted into the starting lineup and played pretty doggone well against Clemson a week ago. Three freshman starters for Georgia defensively last week. That hasn't happened since the Vince Dooley days. Third down and seven. Shaw fires and this one's complete in the first down in Georgia territory near the 45 yard line and got it to Nick Jones. Nice job by Connor Shaw staying in the pocket and waiting for that route to open up against a zone defense. The linebackers drop, Connor Shaw reads it, and right in between the defenders, there's a little curl route, good for the first down. One criticism Steve Spurrier had of his quarterback last week was, hey, let the thing develop. Hang in there a little longer, stay with the pass play, don't be in too big of a hurry to leave the pocket. He did exactly that on that third down throw. Last season, he didn't have to throw a lot against Georgia. Here he is on a quarterback draw. They get a couple out of it. Nick Wilson again, that inside linebacker made the stop. Career high for Wilson last week, 13 tackles against Clemson. We should mention also that South Carolina started the season with four returning starters on the offensive line. The only new guy was going to be the center, Cody Waldrop. He injured his foot in the first game, so they actually have the backup center in there, Clayton Stadnick, who's also a redshirt freshman. They're both in the same class. But Stadnick did not play last week. Again, a second down and long. Shaw hangs in and now starts to move to his left. Still going to throw it on the run and got it complete. And Mike Davis made the catch, picked up a little bit. About four and still bring up a third down situation. I think what Steve Spurrier just grabbed Connor Shaw and told him right there is throw it to that check down right away. He waited too long to throw it out to the back. If it's not there downfield, 
Dump it to the back. See if he can make somebody miss in space and save yourself that scramble out of the pocket. Already the seventh play of the South Carolina drive. And another third down situation. Third and four this time. This is what makes South Carolina so dangerous to defend is the running ability of Shaw in situations like this. Third and short. You have to play both. You can't just go crazy and rush up the field after him in the pocket. High snap. Shaw on the option pitch. And they got the first down, and they got a lot more. Davis spinning his way inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. Nice job by Shaw, first of all, fielding the snap. This is the second high snap in this drive. Again, a new center. Shaw fields it, makes the correct read. Poor leverage that time by the Georgia defense. And an easy first down conversion on the option. Mike Davis had 115 yards last week in the win of the North Carolina. And off to a good start. He got 21 there. And the Georgia defense on their heels a little bit here on the opening drive. Davis inside run this time. A tough couple of yards and actually second effort. Might have picked up two. Marlo Herrera, the first to hit him. One of the guys that did not get very much action for South Carolina a week ago was Bruce Ellington, the two-sport star, the wide receiver and point guard on the basketball team. He had a little bit of a hamstring injury through camp. He's 100% and will probably get more balls thrown his way in this game today. There he is coming down to the bottom of your screen now, the ninth play of the drive. Brandon Wilds in at tailback. At the Georgia 16-yard line, play action. Shaw flush this time from the pocket. Dogs giving chase. Throws on the run in the corner, incomplete. Intended for Jameer Bird. Nice pressure that time yeah. by Leonard Floyd. And that was maximum protection by South Carolina. This was only a two-man route. The only two receivers right here. There were three defenders. They did a nice job of switching. And had Ellington covered in the back of the end zone. Connor Shaw smartly threw the ball away. Well, Georgia's been unable to get out of these third down situations and get South Carolina off the field. And now a flag flies in on a dead ball. Substitution infraction. Offense. 12 players in the formation. Five yards. Still third down. Well, that'll back them up to the 21 yard line. Well, now if you're the Georgia defense. You probably anticipate some kind of a zone defense and you want to let him catch the ball in front of you, not over your head, and then make a sure tackle in the open field and hold them to a field goal attempt. And there you see it, a kind of a three deep prevent look by the Georgia defense. South Carolina, two for two on their third down conversions. This is the longest one they've had on this drive. Noise is getting to Connor Shaw, third down and 13. Quarterback draw all the way. And he's just going to sit down, get what he can, and set up the field goal unit. And did you notice also, he got a few yards, and he went down right in the middle of the field exactly. to help his field goal kicker as well. Pretty smart decision there. Elliott Fry, two for two on the season. Freshman out of Frisco, Texas. So his career long, if you want to put it that way, is 39 yards. The one he hit last week against North Carolina. This will be a 36-yard field goal attempt. South Carolina looking to capitalize on their opening drive and get points. And they do. Fry from 36. And so more than five minutes used on that drive by South Carolina. They finally stalled a little bit on a third and long. Had to settle for three. And now Jadavian Cloudy in the defense will be up next against Georgia. Come on, Russ, it's only 80 degrees. Hug a nine. South Carolina, 3-0 lead. Capping a 57-yard drive and 11 plays and a 36-yard field goal. The opening score of the ball game. Justin Scott Wesley back at the goal line for Georgia. Malcolm Mitchell injured his knee in the first quarter and last week's loss to Clemson out for the year. He would have been big in the return game and he was their leading receiver. So they're missing some speed. This guy they hope can pick up the slack. Land 
Brandon Hard has got it teed up. Knuckleball kick. It'll bounce and go out of bounds. So Georgia's going to get some good field position out of that poor kickoff. You know, back at the SEC Media Days in Birmingham, a lot was said. Jadavian Clowney said a lot of it. He says there's uh, quarterbacks out there that you look in their eyes and you can tell they're scared. If he's staring at me and the ball snapped, if he's staring at me before every snap, I'm just like, oh, we got him. He was alluding to Aaron Murray and Taj Boyd. Aaron Murray said, hey, I'm going to get hit. I'm not scared of getting hit by anyone. And then Mark Rick went on to say, basically, I'd be scared if I was that situation, too. <laughs> Number seven, he puts a fear in a lot of people and a lot of tackles, and he'll line up all over the place tonight if it's anything like last week against North Carolina. And it's a pistol set right now with Quavon Hicks, the fullback in there, and Todd Gurley, the tailback. First down for the Dogs at the 35. They give it to Gurley. And unlike his first carry against Clemson last week when he went 75 yards, he got one, and T.J. Gurley made the stop. Oh and three against South Carolina had one good game actually two years ago But all four of his touchdown passes career-wise against South Carolina came in that game And I backfield and Murray makes a motion and a toss to Gurley and Gurley broke a tackle and he's got first down We take a look at our impact players and obviously, Gurley is one of them. Arthur Lynch at tight end. I think he's too good to only have one pass thrown his way, which was the case last week. And Jadavian Clowney, everybody's impact player when South Carolina is on the field. Todd Gurley, last year's sensational campaign, over almost 1,400 yards rushing, and on everybody's preseason All-America list. So the dogs are already out to the 48-yard line. Murray. Here comes Cloudy. Let's it fly. And he's got his man. And it's caught at the 20 yard line by Michael Bennett. Well, Cloudy got a piece of him, but Murray got rid of it. You got to do different things with Cloudy. This time they're just going to count on their left tackle, Canarius Gates, to block one on one. No help from the back. And he didn't hold him out very long, but long enough. Now at the 20, it's Gurley on the corner. Gurley down the sideline. What an opening drive by the dogs. They get the throw and then they go quick count. They change the tempo right after the conversion and that caught the South Carolina defense out of position and Gurley gets it to the end zone. Patrick Bielis will come in for the point after. They're going to review the touchdown, I think. Really on the field with a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Hubert Owens, our referee. So they'll take another look. It's just a matter of whether he stepped out before he reached the ball over the pylon, because the, the ball clearly crossed the goal line before his body went out. Did he step out before he reached? It almost looks like the tackler, go lightly, might have had his arms wrapped around the lower leg of Gurley and prevented. Oh, well, there's a good shot. So this is going to probably come back and have Georgia at the one yard line. Great shot on the sideline there. And Todd's got to put his helmet back on. Well, that was really smart offensive football by Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator. After they got the completion, they went hurry up, and they put a tight end on Jadavian Clowney's side that time, and he was slow getting lined up. They were slow as a team getting aligned on defense, and they got him with the quick count all the way down inside the five-yard line. Change your looks, change your speed. Rocky Goods, our replay official today, so they're still taking a look at this. Last run by Gurley, but I think it's going to be officially a 19-yarder now instead of a 20-yard touchdown. Again, it appears that just the toe 
of his left foot went out of bounds before he got to the pylon. The really good news for Georgia, Brad, is after review, the ruling is that the ball carrier stepped out of bounds with the ball spotted at the half yard line. We second down. I was going to say the really good news is that Todd Gurley looks pretty good. You know, there was some concern if he was 100%. That little hip flexor, Mark Rick was hoping that a couple more days and some adrenaline would kick in and he'd feel okay. Hubert Owens first. actually said it would be down. second down. It was a 19-yard run for his first down. First and goal inside the one. And now Georgia's got the big heavies up front. And the fullbacks. Will lead one way, Gurley the other, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. You tell the back, you know, you you have the ability to make a cutback if you see something. I think he would have been better off staying on his fullback Hicks' his hips. Watch number 48. If he stays on his hip and gets outside, it's one-on-one -on -one out there to the pylon. Gurley made a decision to cut back inside, and South Carolina was waiting for him. They drop him for a loss of more than two. It's back to the three-yard line, second down and goal. This might be where your guy, Arthur Lynch, steps up. Both fullbacks in front of Gurley. Play fake, Murray, going to loft it to the tight end. Lynch, touchdown. <laughs> Wide open, one of our impact players and a captain, the senior. Out of Massachusetts, Arthur Lynch for the touchdown. So Gurley got him down close, and Murray with his first touchdown pass of the year has Georgia in front. Feeler's point after is good. Aaron Murray off to a good start here in quarter number one, midway through quarter number one. And his touchdown pass caps a 65-yard drive in six plays. Took only two minutes to find his tight end, 7-3 dogs. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Hyundai. New thinking, new possibilities. Georgia's Special Collections Library currently running an exhibit of football memorabilia, photos and bowl rings, trophies, the whole thing. Pretty cool to see. Well, South Carolina definitely gobbled up on that play fake, Todd. Well, our, here's Arthur Lynch right here, but what you got to watch is watch the play fake between Gurley and Aaron Murray. Really sells the run. That holds the linebackers in. Arthur Lynch showed block, hesitated for a second, then released into the end zone. Excellent execution on that drive by the Georgia offense. So it didn't take long for Murray to erase that goose egg as far as touchdown passes. It's an onside kick for the dogs. And they've got it. Wow. Whoa, that was gutsy. Georgia football. The ball has to go 10 yards, obviously. That's the rule. Beautifully executed kick. Now, they saw it. I mean, Sky Moore, number 10, who is a freshman, saw it and was going for the ball, but he was the only South Carolina player in that front wall to react quickly to the football. Blake Sailors recovers the onside kick at the 47-yard line. Now would Georgia take a shot right here? Murray in the pistol. Now everyone looks to the sideline. Three wide receiver group. And it'll be Gurley off the right side. Across midfield to the 49. Talk about different plans, different things you try to do to Clowney. That time they took their fullback, who's an outstanding blocker, Quavon Hicks, and he tried to cut Clowney on the backside. This Georgia offense is built on big plays. When they are playing their best, they are getting big plays out of their passing game and the running game. And uh, when these two teams played last year, that's why South Carolina won so convincingly. They eliminated the big play. Uh, second down and six. Toss sweep Gurley. The left side this time. A major collision there with Marcus Roberts. And Gurley got the best of that. 
Pick up a five. One of the things Mike Bobo told us yesterday about this South Carolina defense, he says, I don't think their linebacking core is as good, and they're definitely not as big as they were a year ago. And right there, you see one of those linebackers, Marquise Roberts, come up and get a, a chest pull of Todd Gurley. And Gurley's already got as many yards as he did the entire game last year. Six carries for 39 yards. There's Mike Bobo, former Georgia quarterback and longtime offensive coordinator. Third down at a yard. Keith Marshall comes in at the tailback spot to give Gurley a breather. Play action. Murray wants it down the middle. Complete. And it's a tight end, Arthur Lynch again. Pick up of 17 and a Georgia first down. Kind of an unusual defensive call by South Carolina at that time because they didn't even rush Jadavian Clowney. They kind of dropped him into zone coverage. And uh, wasn't much linebacker help underneath an easy throw for Murray. And Georgia goes with tempo here again. And will snap it at the 28-yard line. Three wide receiver group again for Aaron Murray. And Keith Marshall will flank him to the right. Murray throws in and out of the hands of Lynch that time. Incomplete. What the tempo does is it, it puts that defense on their heels a little bit. And it puts their hands on their hips a little bit, too. Yep. The, the more plays you make a player or a defense play, the less energy they have to rush the passer and, and defend the run. I mean, that's just normal football. Murray directing traffic on a second and ten. Gives it off and hit in the backfield is Keith Marshall. Jimmy Legree, nice play by the cornerback. Yeah, it was a corner blitz, and I don't think that Murray picked it up, didn't see it quick enough, and they ran the play right into Legree. Nice call that time by Lorenzo Ward, defensive coordinator. That puts Georgia in a third and long situation for the first time today. They had trouble against Clemson last week, only 29% on their third down conversions. And here's a long one for Murray and company at the 31-yard line. Pass should have been caught. Should have been caught and would have been a first down. Brett McGowan dropped it. McGowan is in there playing more in this game because obviously the injury to Malcolm Mitchell, also Jonathan Rump, the junior college receiver they were hoping to get back, is not. That's a beautiful throw and a read by Aaron Murray, and uh, that should have been a first down for Georgia. And Georgia. Apparently going to go for it on fourth down and long. Remember their regular kicker. This is the second game he's out due to suspension. So they don't have any range from the field goal unit. They're going to take a crack at it here on fourth down. They need to get all the way to the 18-yard line. They better chip this time. Murray has plenty of time. Seam rock got him inside the 10 to the 7. And a first and goal for the dog. When Aaron Murray has a clean pocket, he throws extremely accurately. This is just throwing and catching. I mean, this isn't even a challenge right now for Aaron Murray. A lot of space on the outside. Justin Scott Wesley does what McGowan didn't do the play before. And that's first and goal. Flags it down, they'll blow this one dead. Ledge, not very often on a fourth and 13, you pick up 24 yeah. yards. And easily. For the snap, false start. Offense, number 72. Five drives from the previous spot, still first down. Well, that's Canaris Gates, and he's the guy that, for the most part, will have to deal with Jadavian Clowney today, and there will be a few of those penalties probably before it's over. One thing worth mentioning, Victor Hampton, who is typically or normally the starter at corner, was suspended for the first half of this game for a team violation, and so Ahmad Christian, number four, is actually in there as the starter. And it's Todd Gurley. Positive yardage. Didn't look like he was going to get much, and he just drags guys for three yards and inside the 10 again. It'll bring up second down and goal. Part of Georgia's philosophy when they get in this part of the field is they're going to take their chances. Even if you put more guys in the in the box around the line of scrimmage and, than Georgia can block, they believe that Gurley can beat most one-on-one -on -one guys that are unblocked. Ninth play of the Georgia drive following the onside kick recovery after the Georgia touchdown. With that, a 3.45 remaining in the first quarter. Second down, second down a goal at the nine. 
Nice play fake by Murray. Lobs it to the end zone and threw that one over everybody's head. There was some contact that back yeah. there with Justin Scott Wesley and T.J. Gurley, but no flag. Well, I think if the ball wouldn't have been thrown so high, they might have gotten a penalty flag. But this was an uncatchable ball that Aaron Murray threw. He took a shot because Gurley had his back to the to the play and wasn't seeing where the ball was being thrown. But that ball was thrown too high to draw the flag. Gurley goes out. Keith Marshall comes in. And Blitz, quick slant thrown, caught. Back to the five goes Michael Bennett. But it's going to be fourth and goal there. Pretty nice response by the South Carolina defense there. I mean, they, there's a little fatigue with them, but they knew they had to keep Georgia out of the end zone after that fourth down conversion. And they get the stop and a field goal attempt. And that'll mean Patrick Vilas, the walk out from Atlanta. Five for five last week against Clemson. And point afters. They had a bobbled snap that would have been a field goal attempt that could have been huge against the Tigers. In this case, they'll try one from 22 yards away. Everything clean there, and the kick is perfect. So Georgia gets three out of a gutsy special teams adventure by Coach Rick. And they've got a touchdown lead over the Gamecocks here. Two of college football's most storied programs square off under the lights in the big house tonight in Ann Arbor. Notre Dame and Michigan, number 14 against number 17 tonight at 8 on ESPN and watch ESPN. The two quarterbacks squaring off in that one. Evan Gardner and Tommy Reese, who had a nice performance last week against Temple. Here so far, Aaron Murray has the best of Connor Shaw. But South Carolina's defense was on the field basically for about 16 plays in a row after that onside kick and after Georgia's touchdown drive. But the dogs did have to settle for a field goal after having it first and goal at the seven. This kick taken three yards deep by Sean Carson. And Carson hammers he got across the 20 out to about the 22 yard line. From Tommy Reese to Reese Davis. Reese, what he got? Brad, I have the Taco Bell Live Moss moment, Ohio State hammering San Diego State. If you weren't with us earlier, Braxton Miller is a sprained MCL out for the game. Kenny Guyton's doing very well in his stead. Of course, that's pretty easy. That's just a win sprint. 35-0 Buckeyes just before halftime. All right, Reese, keep us posted. South Carolina takes the field. It's been a while since they've been out there offensively now. And they'll work at the 23-yard line. And I think it's very important for South Carolina's offense to make some first downs here and let their defense rest a little bit. And Shaw will keep it. Only got a yard. That's about it. Sterling Bailey, the guy that put him down. You mentioned Connor Shaw from Flowery Branch, Georgia, one of 27 South Carolina players from the state of Georgia. A little extra juice in those guys yeah. this week. They've got eight starters from Georgia. Georgia has all but three of their starters offensively, defensively, and special teams from the state of Georgia. Second down and nine. Play action for Shaw. Plenty of time. Pump fakes once. Now he runs out of time, and down he goes. And Garrison Smith, the nose man, comes up with a sack. Well, this will sack. will go down, and they'll say, well, the offensive line broke down. But this is pretty good protection. It's a blitz. It's well picked up. Connor Shaw's just got to get rid of the football. I mean, if it's not there, you got to throw that one away. You know, and I think he got caught in that place between trying to hang with it and yep. let the play develop and take off by instinct. And the result was a bad play for his offense. And now the crowd coming to life for the Dogs' defense on third down and 15. And they got everybody playing deep. And a three man rush coming. Shaw will take off. And he's not even going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Georgia will force the punt. Leonard Floyd, that freshman. Todd Grantham told us about Leonard Floyd that he was going to play a lot in this game. He's very athletic, and they felt like he could get Connor Shaw on the ground. He was one of those guys in the open field that would be able to tackle the quarterback and get him down, and he certainly did on that third and long. Tyler Hall with a first punt coming up. And Damian Schwann, starting corner. The return man back around his 40-yard line. High 
kick. Great hang time. Fair catch taken by Swan way back at the 30 yard line. Tremendous punch. 49 yards and no chance for a return. We'll return to Athens in a moment. The SEC on the ESPN 10 3 for the This rivalry recap is brought to you by Star Trek Into Darkness in Blu-ray combo pack. Georgia leads the all-time series. Goes back to the late 1800s, 1894, the first time they got together. South Carolina, though, school record three straight over Georgia. And that's stuck in the craw of the Georgia fans and has been with Aaron Murray and guys like that who've never beaten South Carolina. This is their last chance. Now well, they've got the lead right now with 34 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 10-3. And I think Georgia needs to stay aggressive. So far in the first quarter, their offensive game plan has been very aggressive. Aaron Murray's made very good decisions with the football. He's in the pistol right now with Marshall behind him at the tailback spot. Gurley does probably two-thirds of the work, and then Keith Marshall comes in. Great to have two tailbacks that good. Long handoff, almost a missed handoff, and Marshall goes out across the 35, pick up a five. A little bit surprised that Jadavian Clowney has lined up at right defensive end every snap so far in the first quarter. That's what he did when these two teams played a year ago, but in week one, he actually lined up in about six different spots throughout the game. I think it's kind of smart to, to give different looks to the Georgia offense also where Clowney lines up. And one of those six spots was right over the center's nose. And Georgia's going to let the clock wind down to end quarter number one. Aaron Murray can talk things over with Mark Richt. Crowd reacts to a good 15 minutes at home between the hedges. Georgia leading South Carolina 10 3 at the end of one. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. Back to the Raptors as always. Sold out crowd. For a big SEC East battle. Georgia leads at the end of one over six ranked South Carolina, 10 to three. Long way to go, but Todd, this win would take away that bad taste in the mouth from the Clemson game, that's for sure. Absolutely. And, and, and even more so because it's a conference game. Right. And as we talked about at the very top of the show, the goal for both of these teams is let's get to Atlanta. If we get to Atlanta, good chance good things can happen for us. Georgia opens the quarter with. Second down at the 37-yard line. Straight ahead, Gibb. Keith Marshall in the open field. Marshall all the way down to the 35-yard line. He's got more speed than Gurley, and he just picked up 28 yards. What beautiful blocking on the point of attack. They're running a little counter play back to the right side. Watch guys hang on to their block. Nice job by the wide receiver, Michael Bennett, who came in there and got a block on the outside backer, but a good job of sticking on blocks on the back side of that play. And Marshall, with good vision, turns it into a big run. And Keith has got 31 yards now on three carries, and he's close to what he got the entire game a year ago in Columbia. Just outside the Gamecocks 35. Nice play fake, and Murray's in trouble, and Clowney got it. And that one, that didn't take but about two seconds for Clowney to be in the Georgia backfield. Well, he went on an inside move. Watch him take one step up and then a quick inside move. And I don't know if Marshall was supposed to help the tackle Gates on that play or not, but that's the first time in that one-on-one -on -one battle with Canarius Gates, Gates that uh, Clowney had his way. And that's his first sack of the season. And his 22nd of his career. That'll fire him up, I'm sure, and it backs George up to the 45-yard line. And now it's Marshall going left side this time. Broke a tackle, broke another. Cuts it upfield. And Marshall got most, or I should say all of the sack yardage and almost got a first down out of it, a 16-yard run. Well, good counter. Clowney tried to do the same thing. Watch him come inside, and by doing so, he took him out of the play on the run. He goes inside, the run goes outside of him, and Gates is able to knock him all the way down by the center, and Marshall gets most of that yardage back. And gives Georgia a more manageable third down at four, and Genevieve and Clowney will take this play off. Todd Gurley back in there. He'll get the handle. Gurley looks like a face mask. His helmet came off, and now the play is dead. The play is dead as soon as his helmet comes off. 
And that's not to say he wouldn't have scored a touchdown without his hat, but that's the rule. But they're going to have a first down on a face mask penalty, and Gurley, another good yeah. run. You see, again, what you're counting on and betting on as a Georgia offense is that if you get him one-on-one -on -one against an unblocked guy... Personal foul. That's the face mask. Defense, number 99. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Because of the foul, number three can't remain in the football game. Again, even though his helmet came off, Todd Gurley can stay in because it was a penalty on the face mask that brought that helmet off. Well, that was Case Kelsey Quarles, the nose guard, who just instinctively reached out to try to get a piece of Gurley and ended up getting a handful of face masks. He has to come out, but Marshall's looked pretty good on this drive himself. At the 13-yard line, Murray rolling to throw. Firing back across his body, and he got it complete to Scott Wesley, short of the first down. But it's going to be down around the six-yard line. Georgia can get a first down around the three. And they're going to go tempo again here without a huddle. Second down and three from the six-yard line. Murray and the guns going to flare it out to Marshall to the corner. Gone. Touchdown. Aaron Murray's second touchdown pass of this first half. And Georgia an extra point away from a two-touchdown lead. South Carolina chose to take Clowney out of the game to give him a break, which he needed. He stayed out for a couple plays. He stayed out for one play too long because they capitalized on it. Beeler's point after is good. Nice block by Gates, the left tackle. Chris Conley, the wide receiver. Gates got a cut block on the backup defensive end. Conley got a block. Marshall got a touchdown. Georgia leading by two touchdowns. They just capped a 69-yard drive in seven plays with Aaron Murray's second touchdown pass of the day. Well, Jadavian Clowney is a very difficult guy to cut, but with him on the sideline, Mike Bobo called a play that called for Gates to cut. You're also going to see a good block by Conley on the inside defender, and at the very end of the play in the corner of the end zone, Michael Bennett, the other wide receiver, number 82, stays on his block. Perfect call with the personnel on the field at that play for South Carolina. Ten pass attempts, two touchdowns for Aaron Murray. 97 in his Georgia career. Colin Barber to kick. And the kick is deep to Carson. About four yards in, he'll bring it out. Sean Carson. And he's not going to make the 20-yard line. And again, it's Sailors on the special teams. The guy that made the onside kick recovery earlier. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, time for a Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. For the second time in two weeks, the ACC defended its turf against an SEC heavyweight, Miami against Florida. Stephen Morris to Philip Dorsett. Florida defense controlled play, but the offense continued to turn the ball over. That sack and fumble by Jeff Driscoll sealed it. 21-16, Canes beat the Gators. Gamecocks in a tough spot here. Crowd going wild with a two-touchdown lead, and they work from their own 16-yard line. Connor Shaw on the option pitch. Got it on the corner to Davis. Great speed for Davis. And a nice run all the way out near the 40-yard line. 24-yard pickup. Nice block by the tight end, Rory Anderson. He missed last week with a hamstring injury. Big number 81 blocking on the perimeter. I think they got to get the ball in his hands a little bit, and I think Shaq Rowland I think is, is probably their best all-around receiver. They need to get him involved in the passing game this drive as well. Shaq Rowland, number four, former South Carolina Player of the Year. This is the workhorse, Mike Davis. Herrera made the stop. Even the coaches were surprised. They told us about the speed for Davis yep. on that 75-yard touchdown he had last week against North Carolina. Yeah, they knew he was a tough runner in between the tackles, uh, but he, he showed a burst that they weren't quite aware that he had. Younger brother of former Clemson star James Davis. 
Who do you think's faster between those two? <laughs> Depends on which one you ask. Right? Exactly. Second down along five. Shaw trying to get a word to his offensive line with a deafening crowd noise here in Athens. A draw play. And only about a yard gain. Sterling Bailey and Garrison Smith made the stop. Well, coming up now, the most critical third down play, maybe the most critical play of the game so far for South Carolina. Very important that they get a conversion here. Their defense has been on the field a lot. They need to get some offensive momentum here. And again, you're in that area of the field where Connor Shaw is a runner is a part of the package here. Again, they look to the sideline, changing things up if he can be heard. Third down and four. Out of the shotgun. Quick throw and a slant, and it's Ellington for the first down, and then some. Bruce Ellington down to the 42-yard line, pick up a 14. Well, they got that snap off right before the play clock expired. They saw the one-on-one -on -one coverage with the true freshman, and Ellington did a nice job of freezing Langley at the line of scrimmage and getting inside for the slant. Glad you mentioned Georgia's been out there the more majority of the time. On the last 25 snaps, Georgia's offense has been out there 19 yeah. plays. So this is good for South Carolina to keep something working here in Georgia territory with a first down. Ten minutes remaining in a half. Here comes a blitz. Shaw's going to run away from it. Loads and fires. Deep ball and just over the outstretched hands of Keane Whitehurst, who had a long touchdown last week. Tell you what, that was awful close to being a late hit on Connor Shaw as well. The ball was clearly gone when he was leveled at the end of the play. Watch how long the ball's gone before he's hit. Now it's close. Jordan Jenkins in pursuit. So will bring up second down at 10. All the wideouts and tight ends to the right, and now they're going to switch. The tight end back. And a slot to the left on second and ten. In the shotgun, Shaw stands in, scrambles. Now he'll take off, and he got away from the rush. And he got away from everybody. Connor Shaw, great run. Run out of bounds after a pickup of 20. Nice instinctive move. It was a four-man rush, so you, as a quarterback, you look downfield and you feel the rush, but he saw and felt a huge lane just to the right of his center open up for him, and uh, that's just an instinctive football play. That's what he does best, Yep, right there. Got it all the way to the 22-yard line. First and 10, Gamecocks trying to close the gap here in a 14-point ball game. Two tight ends set, one of them in motion, Jarrell Adams. High snap, but handled. And a little quick opener to the 20 from Brandon Wilds. And Jordan Jenkins, one of the first Georgia players there. Smith had a nice game from the nose tackle spot for Georgia as well. When these two teams played in Columbia last year, the game was over pretty quickly because yeah. South Carolina jumped out to a 21 to nothing lead. And Connor Shaw made some timely runs in that game, in, in those early scoring drives. And it really put that Georgia defense back on their heels. Couple good ones here so far in the first half. He had 78 yards on 14 carries last year in the lopsided Gamecock win. Play action for him. Throws it right down the middle and broken up. Should have been caught. Rory Anderson, the tight end. I think it hit him right between the eight and the one. It did, but the ball was underthrown. You know, if Connor Shaw just throws this further to the back of the end zone, then it's not a difficult catch. He pulls the string a little bit and he has to wait. And by waiting, he allowed the linebacker, Ramik Wilson, to kind of distract him with the football. It should have been caught, but it could have been thrown a little better as well. And it's getting rowdy in here right now. Third down and eight. Empty backfield. Timeout, and Georgia. Timeout taken by Georgia. 8.42 remaining first half. A big third down coming up when we come back. College football brought to you by 
Chevrolet, find new roads. And Allstate Insurance, proud sponsor of the SEC. Are you in good hands? Some Ugga wannabes there. The pups playing outside. Some young pups on the Georgia defense. Cement dog, hairy dog, Georgia Bulldogs lead. 17 to 3, the biggest third down of the ball game coming up so far. And there's the real Ugga nine. Came out of his doghouse enjoying the beautiful sunshine. Ninth play of the South Carolina drive right at the Georgia 20 yard line. Connor Shaw, middle screen. Davis one handed it and weaves his way close to a first down, but about two yards shy. It was an incredible catch by Davis. This ball was not accurately thrown by Shaw. Reached out with one hand and then was able to get his momentum going forward to get very close to that first down marker. Ball coach is going for it here, Todd. Yep. Fourth down and two. I kind of thought it might be when he had two backs in the backfield on that third down play that he might have been thinking of staying out there for four. Shaw on the gun. And it's a first down. It'll be first and goal, it looks like, right at the 10. A veteran offensive line for South Carolina. Four returning starters. They ran right behind their left guard, A.J. Can, who is the most experienced, making his 27th career start. Ronald Patrick, the right guard, did a nice job pulling around in front. And they keep it on the ground. And just bulldoze their way down inside the seven. With both these teams, their backs are hard-running physical backs. And so if you want to stop them, you have to stop them on their side of the football. You have to get penetration across the line of scrimmage, get them to change directions or slow down. If you let them get a full head of steam hitting the line of scrimmage, they're going to drag you for extra yards, whether it's South Carolina or Georgia. South Carolina can actually get a first down if they hit about the four-inch line. So this is not second down and goal, but it is second down and six. Brandon Wilds in the backfield is Shaw. And again, he comes up to his offensive line. High snap. Got it to Wilds, and Wilds scores. Standing up. Touchdown, South Carolina. That looked too easy. Well, just a little zone run. Corey Robinson, the left tackle, the left guard, A.J. Can. They just power their way into the end zone. That's just good hard nose running that time on that drive by both Davis and in that case, Wilds. Elliott Fry in for the point after. Eighty four yard drive and a little over five minutes. Good looking drive. Connor Shaw kept it alive with his legs. And then his tailback. Did the final six yards in Brandon Wilds. 84-yard march in 12 plays. South Carolina with a touchdown. And the game is back to a three-point difference. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN from Athens. I may have said three-point difference going to break. I apologize. 17 to 10. One score difference as Brandon Wilds scores to cap an 84-yard drive. This was good work by South Carolina. Connor Shaw's looking to the sideline. They're looking for the right look to run the football again. So they see it, and what they're looking for is a bubble. And what a bubble is, is these three defenders right here kind of form a bubble. You want to run to the bubble. You want to run in that area, and that's exactly what South Carolina did. They got the look they wanted. They got three big linemen blocking, two wide receivers coming in, run to the bubble, run to the end zone for six points. Landon Ard will tee it up. And Justin Scott Wesley back for Georgia, the goal line. Todd Gurley, a kick returner at times, but they don't want to put him in that spot with that hip flexor problem that he had after the Clemson game last week. If they desperately needed a big kick return, Mark Rick would probably want him out there, though. And this one won't be returnable. They'll bring it out to the 25, and we check in with Holly. Well, people analyzing every move that Jadavion Clowney makes may be wondering why he was out on that series where Georgia scored last time the defense was on the field. Well, he had actually been in on every single play that the defense played in the first quarter for South Carolina. 
they had been rolling in guys, second deep guys, on every position on that defensive line except Jadavion. I did confirm it with their sports information people. He played every single play in the first quarter, so they did give him just a breather. He was the only one who hadn't had one yet, just yeah. bad timing. Okay, thanks, Holly. Yeah, that's normal. I mean, you got to rotate those guys, and if they'd have got to a third down pass play, I bet he would have been in on that play. Here's Georgia in an eye backfield with Todd Gurley, the tail behind Quavon Hicks. And he gets the call, and he's going to lose yardage this time. T.J. Surratt is the first guy to meet him, and then he gets buried by three Gamecocks before it's all over. Remember what I just said about with both of these teams and the backs that they have, if you want to stop them, you have to get on their side of the line of scrimmage. That was good penetration by South Carolina. They got Gurley moving a little bit sideways instead of straight up north and south, and they were able to make the tackle behind the line. Brings up second down and 11. South Carolina thinking about a blitz, and now Murray takes his time. And he moves Todd Gurley to his left. He's going to throw back the other way, and it's caught by the tight end Lynch at about the 29-yard line. So they've already used Lynch a lot more than they did against Clemson, including a touchdown. And they'll go hurry up here on a third down. It's a nice job finding a matchup. Lynch is six foot five. He was working against Gurley, who's five foot ten. An easy throw and catch for Murray. Big third down here for Georgia, trying to recapture some momentum here with under six minutes to play in the half. From the thirty. Murray keeps it on the ground, and only a pickup of a yard or two, so they're going to have to punt for the first time. Nice job that time. That outside linebacker, Marquise Roberts, lost his helmet on the play, but he didn't lose a hold of Gurley, and they, they stopped him short. It's a big stop for Carolina. No doubt. Colin Barber, his first punt of the day, coming up here with 5.25 on the clock running, remaining in the half. Bruce Ellington, back deep. Oh, bobble the snap. Had to cover it. And South Carolina's going to have it at the Georgia 18 yard line. Huge play. And a gaff by the special teams for Georgia. Well, they had a gaff in the Clemson game a week ago that cost them three points. This was a good snap. Just a lack of concentration by the punter, Colin Barber. A week ago at Clemson with the score 31 28 they botched a snap on what would have been a chip shot field goal that could have tied the game. Another special teams error sets up South Carolina with a chance to draw even in this game before the end of the first half. Golden opportunity here for the Gamecocks in the red zone at the 18 yard line. Connor Shaw, three wideouts for him in the gun. Waiting for the snap on the silent count. Drops, fires to the corner, to the end zone. Touchdown. Nick Jones in the corner. And just one snap after that bottle snap by Georgia. And it's an 18-yard touchdown. Well, they picked on the true freshman, Brendan Langley. And Langley got caught with his body turned inside and looking inside. And they ran the post corner route, beautifully run by Nick Jones, and a perfect throw by Connor Shaw. They went after the rookie. He was in bad position. And one play after the turnover, they get a touchdown. Just like that, tie ball game, or will be after this point attempts by Elliott Fry. And we're all tied up between the hedges. It took all of seven seconds for South Carolina to take advantage of one bad Georgia play. Definitely not a special team play, but a special touchdown in the corner from 18 yards. We're dead even. An RG3's return. There's a lot of, uh, a lot to get excited about with that one. So the last two snaps for South Carolina have produced touchdowns. Deep kick, and this won't be returnable. Got a flag down, however, back at uh, 
the 40 yard line. It's going to be an offside call, I would think. But we'll let Hubert Owens tell us. Offside, number eight of the kicking team. That penalty is five yards added to the end of the run. First down. And before the snap from the 30, let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Brad Lex's halftime report is coming up. Mark and Lou will be ready to go. We'll talk about Miami's victory against Florida, what it signals for the Hurricanes the rest of the season. Braxton Miller left the game for Ohio State against San Diego State, latest on his condition, and we'll look ahead to Notre Dame and Michigan. Here's Georgia from the 30 on first down. Todd Gurley picks up five, and we're down to five remaining in the second quarter. Georgia has two of its timeouts remaining. You know, he... He looks big on TV, but when I was down on the field before he's, the game, he's really big. He's put together. I mean, his lower body, his legs and thighs are huge. Here comes his whole body for a first yeah. down run out to the 41-yard line. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people want to try to draw comparisons between he and Herschel Walker. And I remember when we played Herschel Walker in the 83 Sugar Bowl, the key for our defense was to try to get him moving east and west, right. try to turn change his directions and make him run sideways don't let him get going upfield here he gets going upfield stiff arm Hurley Gurley out to the 47 yard lines where he stepped out but that shows his power and a 12 yard pickup you have to set the edge of your defense and turn him back inside and don't let him get those shoulders pointed straight up the field what a stiff arm wow at the 47 they're going to keep feeding him this time he's Gonna run out of real estate after a short game. But Georgia's got something working, and South Carolina unable to substitute. They do bring in a fresh guy now, but Georgia's going right back to the line of scrimmage. Well, you've got great field position, you've got plenty of time. That's got a couple timeouts. Kelsey Quarles down on the sideline. And so that's gonna stop play and stop the fact that Georgia can't go with a hurry up now. I didn't see him down in front of the Georgia bench. And, you know, the fans are coming. Some of the fans are booing, thinking he's faking an injury. If you're going to fake an injury, you're not going to do it on the Georgia sideline. Not really, no. Okay? You're going to find a, a little different place to do that. A lot was made of the Clemson game. Leonard Floyd, the outside linebacker, was shaken up on a play. And the Clemson faithful thought that he was just trying to slow down Taj Boyd and Clemson. And he said, well, I, I was hurt. Mark Rick said, I tell my guys, stay down. If you're hurt, stay down. I don't care if it stops play or not. You've got to err on the side of caution if you're an official too and a lot of people have said that they have to change a rule or make it a penalty and when you're out there you don't know if guys yeah. hurt or not you got to stop the game well, Quarles was reaching back to his right hamstring I don't know if he's cramping up or what he, he had to sit out the first half of last week's game because of the suspension and they thought he was primed for a big game tonight but uh, having a little trouble with fatigue it looks like so Georgia now to second down at eight at the South Carolina 44-yard line. Trying to get points here before halftime. Quick slant, caught. Rhett McGowan, who dropped one earlier, holds on to this one down to the 30-yard line. Well, the key to this Georgia offense today is just the balance. The balance between run and pass and the quick decisions by Aaron Murray. He's not holding on to the ball a long time. There's space to throw the football because they're mixing run and pass so effectively well. Marshall at the tailback spot. He'll get the handle on the inside, and he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Marquise Robinson, or Roberts, rather, in on the stop. So we're down to 340, and a second and long coming up. There's two Gerald Dixons, a Gerald Dixon Jr. and a Gerald Dixon on the defense at times for South Carolina. They are half-brothers. <laughs> At least we don't have a George Foreman out there, five or six of them. Second down, 11. Murray, again, they throw it to McGowan. He breaks into the secondary, and it looks like he's got a first down. Well, what a great job by the center, David Andrews. In college football, if you throw a screen, if it's caught behind the line of scrimmage, linemen can release, and the only guy that got down there in front of the play was the center, and he got a pancake block that allowed McGowan to, to get that very close to a first down. Andrews, a junior out of Johns Creek, Georgia, with that block, and it picked up 
All but the last yard. Third down and less than one at the 21. Two tight end set for Georgia in an eye backfield with Keith Marshall behind the fullback. He'll get the call. He's got the first down inside the 20. And the ball will come out. So Georgia's going to have it right at the 20. They didn't need very much. Had their heavy personnel in. Marshall covering up the ball, and there it came out, but the ruling was that he was already down before the ball was raked out. Todd Gurley back in for the Georgia backfield. And again, the whole offense looks to the sideline. They've gone 50 yards, a ninth play of the drive, trying to score here in the final couple minutes of the half. And a little confusion out there, and Aaron Murray's got to take a timeout. So one timeout remaining for Georgia. We'll take a break with them here. 2.08 remaining second quarter. No time driving. They've got it at the 20-yard line. Aaron Murray's hit his last six passes, 10 out of 13 in the first half. Todd Gurley breaks it outside. Gurley with another stiff arm, and it's first and goal. Georgia. He is quite a package to try to bring down. Well, yeah, it just shows you the, the nimbleness to bounce this outside. I mean, this is an inside run. Watch him bounce right here, right off the left foot, bounces outside, and by doing that, gets more yardage. Here he comes on the inside. Gurley's close, down just outside the one. And again, this is where you feed him the ball because you're betting on the fact that even if they have an unblocked guy, if it's a linebacker or a defensive back, and it's one-on-one, -on -one, Gurley's going to win that battle. Second down a goal inside the two. Gurley straight ahead, plows his way in. Touchdown, Georgia. Boy, what an impressive drive by Georgia. And they score on a two-yard touchdown run. Good push up front. Again, the fullback's in there, and then the leg drive of Gurley just drives it into the end zone. Feed him the ball. When you get inside the five-yard line like that, take your chances that people don't want to tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. Caps a 70-yard drive in a hurry with a two-yard touchdown run, and Georgia again takes a touchdown lead back. 24 to 17. Pretty tasty first half. Speaking of which, let's check in with Todd's taste of the town. Seven years ago, two friends, Alicia Seegers and Cooper Hudson, who had both worked in the restaurant business for a long time, had a chance to open up their own spot on the east side of Athens. It's called Mama's Boy. Now, the original intent was not to focus on breakfast, but three years ago, they stopped serving dinners, and it's become the go-to spot for my favorite meal of the day. So Todd's favorite meal of the day is always <laughs> breakfast. I like all of them, but that is my uh, that is my favorite. We'll see what Todd had after the kickoff. Todd Gurley, 244 yards on the season already, 8.4 a carry, and that's helped by a 75-yard touchdown run against Clemson on the first snap offensively for him this year. Well, I think Mark Rick got his wish when I talked to him Thursday. He says I'm hoping two more days of healing and some adrenaline. And Gurley will feel okay like playing football on Saturday. It's a high short kick this time. And running catch at the 15 by Carson. And he's run out of bounds before he got to the 30-yard line. Back to Taste of the Town. And the theme here is Southern Fun Dining, and I went with a potato hash with smoked pulled pork. It's topped by two poached eggs and a Carolina Fire hollandaise sauce. But the kicker for me here, a menu item that reminded me of my favorite Bill Cosby routine, chocolate cake for breakfast. Dad is great. Hey, give us chocolate cake. Only you. <laughs> Only you would have cake for breakfast. Wow. When I saw that, I said, I have to get it. I've never seen it on a menu, and I love Bill Cosby. And, of course, with my four boys, that, that's one of my favorite routines uh, of all time. You're kind of a mama's boy, yeah. anyway. What a great place, though. 
South Carolina, they got all three of their timeouts. Connor Shaw in the pocket now, runs and throws and completes it to the tight end. And he picks up 11 on a first down. South Carolina has all three of their timeouts. The key is getting that first first down when you're in a two-minute type offensive set. So they got that. Clock stops while they reset the chains. Now it starts to move. You can be aggressive here because you've got good field position and you have all three of your timeouts. Shaw again flush to his left and he's going to keep it this time. Tight ropes the sideline and gets pushed out of bounds there. Ray Drew made the tackle and that stops the clock with 112 remaining in the half. This is one of those things where you worry about with a young defense and a lot of new starters for Georgia. You've played extremely well. You don't want to let down right here at the end of the half. You don't want to have a mental breakdown and give up a big easy play after you've played pretty well for the first 30 minutes. Second down at seven from the 43. Connor Shaw, little stunt on the defensive line for Georgia, and they're going to be able to track him down as he got back to the line of scrimmage. Sterling Bailey, nice job to cut inside the block and make the tackle. Well, Jordan Jenkins was the first guy to get to the pocket. He has a great first step. What a burst off the edge. He got up the field and forced Connor Shaw to step up in the pocket. Timeout. South Carolina. South Carolina uses one of its timeouts time out the second half. with 55 seconds remaining in the half. Jarvis take a break with him we'll be right back time right now for our Aflac trivia question Aflac two coaches who are all-time wins leaders at two SEC schools I think that one's too easy but we'll get to the answer before halftime will South Carolina have an answer here on third down at seven Georgia's hoping not Connor Shaw has been sharp with his third down passing. Empty backfield. Set to throw, and again, the rush gets to him, and he's going to keep it on the ground and pick it up himself. And now he cuts back to the middle of the field, and he's all the way to the 40-yard line. He stepped out of bounds, though. I think he still got the first down, but he stepped out just inside the 50. Looks like he had it by about a yard when he stepped out of bounds. Good coverage downfield by the Bulldogs. But again, you have to account for Connor Shaw. He's a very effective runner, whether it's on design run plays or this, a scramble. Linesman was right on it there to say he stepped out at the 48-yard line. Nonetheless, first down, first and 10 at the 48. South Carolina trying to tie it here before halftime. Middle screen. This time, Brandon Wilds on the run, and Wilds is going to be close or maybe pick up another first down. And Shaw is down. Yeah, he got drilled. I mean, you know, if you're a defensive lineman and you have a free course to the quarterback, you probably better expect that there's a draw coming. They let those guys come in, and they threw the draw right where they left. You saw Dylan Thompson start to take the field. He came in for one play last week and threw a 29-yard touchdown pass when Shaw was shaken up. But Connor's going to stay in there here on first and 10. Throws wide side this time, and a good throw, and out of bounds is Nick Jones. So South Carolina moving it right yeah. down the field. Good game management right now by Connor Shaw, and that's what you would expect out of a senior. Again, trying to get that first win against a ranked opponent on the road. And as a quarterback, you live for these kind of situations. A, a scoring opportunity late in the half or late in the game. 18 seconds left here in the first half. At the Georgia 30-yard line. The time is of the essence here. Only 18 seconds remaining. Shaw going to go to the end zone. Man out there. Got it and touchdown. Nick Jones again. They went after the freshman for the second time in the game. And that's kind of what I was talking about with young players. You don't want to have a letdown late in the half and give up a big play. They got Langley earlier in the game. And they went after him here with 18 seconds left, and the ball got thrown over his head. Perfect throw. And Jones' second touchdown catch of this half. One in one corner of the end zone and one in the other. And Connor Shaw and Dylan Thompson saying, there we go. Extra point away from a tie game again. Yeah. 
Elliott Fry, the true freshman. Ties things at 24. How about this half, huh? 24-24 between number 6 and number 11. Well, we asked you our Aflac trivia question a couple minutes ago. The two coaches were all-time wins leaders at two schools. Well, you knew Steve Sperger is going to be one of them because he's here today, and Paul Bear Bryant the other, Alabama and Kentucky for the Bear, and South Carolina and Florida for the head ball coach. Pretty good half, partner. Real good half. Real good half, and, and, and good responses by both teams. You know, that's, that's the thing. It looked like the game was going to swing one way or the other, and uh, both teams with excellent responses. Todd Gurley with a touchdown on the ground. Aaron Murray with a couple through the air, and now his counterpart, Connor Shaw, has answered with two touchdown throws in this quarter of his own. Well, they went after that freshman two times in the second quarter, and both times he got caught with his body in a bad position and his eyes too locked into watching the quarterback and lost track of a receiver running by him and uh, a big-time throw by Connor Shaw. Justin Scott Wesley, number 86, waiting on Landon Ard's kick. And he drills it deep again. This one's returnable from about four yards deep. Scott Wesley weaving through traffic, got out to the 24-yard line as we take a look at the touchdown one more time. Well, here's Langley. Now, this route, there's nothing to it. It's not a double move. He's just going to run a takeoff. But Langley's eyes are looking at the quarterback and he doesn't get his hips turned quick enough to react to the throw. And before he knows it, the receiver's by him. And, and that happened to him twice in the second quarter, once on a go route right there and earlier on a corner route. And you assume George is just going to take a knee here and head to the locker room. Both quarterbacks impressive in this first half. Battle of SEC East heavyweights, and it's dead even after two quarters. Couldn't ask for more. Number six, South Carolina, 24. Number 11, Georgia, 24. Let's check in with Mark Rick and Holly Rowe. Holly. Coach, what factors did you consider when you decided to go for that onside kick early in the game? Well, just the way they lined up, it looked like it was there, and our guys executed it very well. What kind of impact do a decision like that to go for it and then go for it on fourth and 13 have on your ball club in this game? Well, when you make them, it's a good impact. So, you know, hopefully we'll be able to make it when we take those types of risks. But... You know, everything was calculated, and uh, the guys executed well. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. So we played a half in Athens. Mark Ricks heads to the locker room. His team, 24-24 matchup with South Carolina as we head for Reese, Lou, and Mayday in the Lexus Halftime Report. Fellas. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Doesn't get any bigger in week two of a college football season than number six, South Carolina, and right. number 11, Georgia, between the hedges. Murray, here comes Plowley, lets it fly, he's got his man, play fake, Murray, Murray and the guns, gonna flare it out to Marshall, to the corner, drops, fires to the corner, to the end zone, touchdown, second down a goal inside the two, Gurley straight ahead, plows his way in, touchdown Georgia, Shaw, gonna go to the end zone, man out there, got it, and touchdown, Nick Jones, Again. And we welcome you back to ESPN's College Football, presented by Cars.com. SEC on ESPN, sun-drenched Sanford Stadium. Doesn't get any closer either. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly will be along in a second. Georgia has two more total yards <laughs> in South Carolina. First downs are even. Penalties are even. Sacks are even. Yeah. Scores even. And so are turnovers, right. and I think that will change in the second half. I really think in a game, the way this game is going, in the feel of this game, whoever can create some turnovers in the second half is going to have the upper hand because both offenses have been very efficient. Both quarterbacks have played well. They Each of them hit their last six passes to end the first half. So turnovers, I think, will, will turn the game in the second half. One was 9 out of 13. One was 10 out of 13, talking about the quarterback. Let's go down to the sideline of Holly Rowe. Well, I was able to talk to Steve Spurrier 
he said that when it was down 17 to 3, what was going through his mind was just calling plays, continuing to gain some momentum. He said that Connor's run out at the quarterback position really helped them keep plays alive. He said, hey, Holland, he's got to keep making plays. We'll see who makes the most plays in the final two quarters. And this one has the feel that maybe whoever has the football last survives and wins it. Third quarter underway. Justin Scott Wesley's just got to watch this one go out the back of the end zone. We talked about the two quarterbacks, both having something to prove. Aaron Murray has struggled against top 20 teams. Connor Shaw's three losses have come on the road against good teams, and both had great first halves. They really did. I mean, they showed excellent leadership. They did what, what they do well. Aaron Murray distributing the football to a lot of different people, and Connor Shaw running when the opportunity presented itself. Georgia comes out with a four wide receiver group here to open the third quarter. And Todd Gurley with Aaron Murray in the shotgun. It'll be Gurley straight up the middle. Got three. JT Surratt on the defensive front for South Carolina made the stop. You know, so much is made of Jadavian Clowney, but those other three guys up there on the yeah. front wall for South Carolina, pretty good football players. Well, they are. And also, when you pay so much attention to one guy and, and have a plan to, to block one guy, a lot of times it leaves other guys on that defensive front man-to-man -man single block. If you missed the first half, Jadavian Clowney had one sack on Aaron Murray. They're going to throw it right over in here, and it's in and out of the hands of Scott Wesley incomplete. See, you can't, he's very difficult to cut because he's so athletic and so big. They try to cut him on a short throw like that. He still is able to get up in the air and distract Aaron Murray and force an inaccurate throw. So Georgia finds itself with a third and long to open up the third quarter. Murray, blitz coming this time. He's going to roll away from it. Being chased, got away, but he's not going to get enough for a first down. Got across the 30, and that's it. Joe well, Lightly was giving chase, and then T.J. Holloman's the guy that made the tackle. Nice three and out to start the third quarter for South Carolina. Remember, their defense in the first quarter was on the field the majority of the quarter. And so that's a good start for them here to start the second half. Three and out. Go over and get some Gatorade. Remember, Colin Barber now dropped a snap in punt formation in the first half and that led to a quick strike 18 yard touchdown and I'm sure he's going to be trying to hold on to this one before he kicks it away as you look behind it and he does get the kick away high and fair caught back at the 23 yard line by number 23 Bruce Ellington South Carolina had something going on the sideline a minute ago between coaches in the heat of battle. And sometimes the heat gets hotter all the time. Wow. And those are defensive coaches, and it was a three and out. That's what, are that's they what I'm for? a little bit <laughs> confused by there. What, what people don't realize is Todd and I get into an occasional one up here, too. <laughs> Usually over food. Yes. <laughs> Usually over food. Yes, exactly. <laughs> First down, South Carolina. <laughs> um, it's on 23. Kind of Shaw, the pistol set with Mike Davis behind him. High snap. Made a nice recovery to catch that thing and then just had to cover it. Now that's about the fourth high snap of the ball game. Again, remember, Cody Waldrop is not playing their starting center. This is Clayton Stadnick, the backup. And this is about the fourth time this has happened. Shaw's been able to field them all cleanly except that one. And so they start with a negative play on first down. Loss is seven. So Georgia plays a 3-4 defense, which means somebody lines up right on the nose of the center every play. Shaw on second and long, flares it out. Davis on the fly. Nice pass. And down the sideline goes Davis. Boy, hit that perfectly in stride on the pass. And Davis with a head of steam rips off 29 yards. Boy, a breakdown on the perimeter of Georgia's defense. It's only a four-man rush. There should be guys out there. And the inside linebacker, Rameek Wilson, very late getting over there. It's a breakdown. South Carolina goes without a huddle, giving Georgia a little taste of tempo here and a pickup of three or four by Davis. His time on the ground. Josh Harvey Clemens from the secondary made the stop. 
And still, there's some chatter going on on the sideline between coaches on uh, Steve Spurrier's staff. South Carolina moving out near midfield on Georgia. Trying to take momentum away. They got that touchdown in the final seconds of the second quarter and now have a good looking opening drive on their first possession and they keep it going. First down in dogs territory now inside the 40 yard line. Let's check in with Holly. Well, the coaches are fired up over here on the South Carolina sideline. There was some discussion about what plays and what they were explaining to the players. I saw some of the players in their huddle get big eyes like, ooh, coaches going after it. <laughs> but I saw everybody hug them out, saw a couple of guys pat each other on the butt. Men are so good at just hugging it out after stuff like that. That's what you have to do. You got to go to the next play. That's you right. You can't afford to worry about the last play. <laughs> First down, South Carolina. At the Georgia 39, Connor Shaw. Throws on the run and overshot everybody. Intended, I guess, for Brandon Wilds out of the backfield. He's so dangerous, though, because of that ability to extend a play. That time he felt the upfield rush by Jordan Jenkins. He knew his tackle was going to take him beyond the pocket, and he slipped right underneath him. Now, it was an incomplete pass, but that threat that he can do that on any pass play really has to, you have to be aware of it if you're a defense. His first incompletion, in fact, in the last nine throws. Let's see if they go after the freshman again here. Brendan Langley, number four. Got three receivers to the right side. Shaw scans the field, pumps once and twice, and now keeps it. Gets what he can and got out of bounds. Really nice job by Brandon Wilds, the back in the formation that time, turning into a blocker. He was an intended receiver. He was out in the pass route. He felt his quarterback scramble, and then he immediately turned into a downfield blocker and enabled Shaw to get closer to that first down. And again, Shaw's footwork puts him in a more manageable third down. Third and five. Georgia fans really hoping their defense finds a way to stop this opening march of the third quarter by the Gamecocks. Shaw throws incomplete intended for Anderson, the tight end. So they do get the stop. And again, this is kind of no man's land out here at the 35-yard line. Do you punt? Do you stay out there and go on fourth and five? Steve Spurrier will make that decision right here. I think earlier in the game, he went for it because he felt like his defense was having trouble slowing down Georgia, and he felt like he needed to match points. Now the game's even, but he's you're right. He's right in that dangerous ground. He's going to put the ball in Connor Shaw's hands, his senior quarterback. They picked up a fourth and two in the first half. This is fourth and five. George is going to blitz this time. Shaw in trouble. Runs out of it. He'll keep it and get the first down and then some. Again, lost the ball at the end, but he was down. Picked up nine yards on a third and five, uh, fourth and five, rather. Wait a minute. They just said Georgia football. Well, Connor Shaw is saying I was down, which obviously they, it was ruled a fumble, so they can review this. Again, the presence of Shaw, he felt Harvey Clemens come upfield. He stepped right inside him. Now, was he down before the ball comes Ooh, out? Maybe not. I don't know. It looked like Herrera punched it out before the knee was down. That is a bang-bang yeah. play right there. And it was ruled a fumble on the field so it has to be compelling evidence to overturn the call on the field Again, indisputable evidence you see his left knee but the ball's already on its way the ball's out before his knee hits and georgia's offense is on the field but again this is under review he had the first down it was a great decision to leave the pocket and run when he did he just didn't secure the football all the way to the ground you said about five minutes ago that the game will change if the turnover story yeah. changes. We might have our first one right here. Come out. The ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense. The previous play is under review. South Carolina will not be charged with a timeout. Well, I don't think the fans will be booing for too long because uh, th this this call is going to get upheld. Here's one more angle I don't think we've seen before. There the ball is coming out and there the knee and that is so close. Yep. That if indeed it stands with a call on the field, I got to give the officials a heck of a lot of credit yep. for seeing that. Well, and again, when in doubt, 
you call the fumble because it can be reviewed and you have a chance to slow it down and look at it in a lot of different ways and come away with the absolute correct call. You know, new, somewhat new to SEC stadiums this year, the fans are yeah. seeing what the replay officials are seeing, and that's why you heard that big surge from the crowd here in Athens moments ago because they just showed it on the Jumbotron down in the left corner of the end zone. And uh, what the 92,000 are thinking, you will hear about After from review, Hubert Oven. The ruling on the field is confirmed. First turnover of the ball game. At the Georgia 25-yard line. And that's the first miss cue by number 14 today. Well, I would expect that Jadavian Clowney, it's about time for him to step up and make a play for the Carolina defense. He's been pretty quiet, had the one sack. He's going to need to step up and make a play. Murray's going to flare it out to Marshall, and he hits him in stride. Keith Marshall cuts back inside all the way to the 28. A 48-yard pass play. Clowney came inside. They got a block on the linebacker. Actually, two defenders ran into each other, the corner and the safety, and nobody was on the edge of the defense, and Marshall turned a short pass into a long game. Marshall comes out, and Gurley comes back in in a pistol set at the 27-yard line. And Gurley broke one tackle, kept his balance, and he's down near the 20. Running over guys, including Bryson Williams, who's slow to get up. It gets it gets old tackling him and the longer a game goes The more difficult it is to tackle him and the more courage it requires to come up and try to tackle him and Williams is gonna have to come out. He's still down early a carry away from another hundred yard game And he's fired up after that last run. I think he'd rather have a six-yard run where he runs over a couple of people than some of those long ones yeah. And uh, Bryson Williams is a guy that felt the effect of that. He's a Georgia native out of Warner Robins. Well, remember, when these teams played last year, South Carolina's defense just smothered Georgia's offense, held them to under 250 yards of offense. Gurley had 39 yards. Marshall had 37 yards. Aaron Murray had a bad game. I mean, it was a total dominating effort by South Carolina, but the big play has returned to the Georgia offense both run and pass today. At the Gamecock 21. Second down at four. Chaz Elder is the guy that took Bryson Williams' spot in the secondary. Gurley, this time he can't quite climb in there, and we've got a flag flying late. Kelsey Quarles is a guy that made contact with a penalty marker down. Kind of thrown in the area where it might be a face mask, but I thought his knee was down before he lunged forward, and the face mask occurred on that lunge. Personal foul. Defense number eight. Hands to the face. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Dewan Lewis with the penalty, and it's half the distance to the goal. Well, we saw one earlier where they actually ripped Gurley's helmet off. <laughs> Lewis is being held himself. Well, it's on oh, the offensive line, but yep, it's not it is. on yep. Gurley. It's on David Andrews, hands yep. to the face. He's being held, and he had his hand in Andrews' face. First and ten, just inside the 11. Murray flips it out to Conley, and that's his first catch, and he loses yardage. Loss of a couple. Chris Conley, it's four catches on the season, and again, Georgia playing without Malcolm Mitchell. Who tore his ACL last week in the loss to Clemson? He'll be out for the season. And we wish him well in his rehab. Keep an eye on Arthur Lynch down here. A big target on the inside of the offense. Gurley can't get away this time. Jadavian Clowney holding on for dear life. Now he crashed. He's been coming inside a lot instead of going up the field. Doesn't want to get run. Underneath, he's been on a lot of inside moves. That time, he fell right into the play. Works down the line of scrimmage. That's perfect technique by defensive end. Get right down the line of scrimmage and chase the ball. Third down and 12 now for Georgia. Trying to take advantage of the turnover. 
Their biggest receiver height-wise is Michael Bennett. He's down on the left side in the slot. Murray, here comes the heat. Down he goes. Corner blitz. Actually, it was the outside linebacker, the spur player, Marcus Roberts. Yeah, the right tackle, John Theus, couldn't get outside. Well disguised and a well-timed pressure from the outside. The tackle couldn't react quick enough. And again, sometimes when you're so concerned about a guy on the other side, Clowney, you forget about what happens on the other side. And that was a well-timed and well-executed pressure. A little bit of pressure on this guy, Patrick Bielis. Made his first field goal from 22, but this one's 15 yards deeper. 37-yard kick, and it's good. So they did get three out of that fumble recovery. The first turnover of the game gives Georgia the lead back with 8.03 to go third quarter. Dogs, 27-24. Powerful conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Traditions found a new home, the SEC Network. Launching in August 2014. For more info, go to GetSECNetwork.com. And the last seven BCS national champs have come from the most powerful conference in college athletics, including three of the last four for Alabama. Todd and I had an opportunity for a quick conversation with Commissioner Mike Slide here at halftime in attendance with 92,000 others here at Athens today. Colin Barber to kick. Sean Carson waits back deep. This one's a knuckleball line drive. Carson fields it at the 10. Cuts back to the middle of the field and got buried at about the 23-yard line. Connor Shaw only one mistake so far today. Other than that, the senior from Flowery Branch has been exceptional. He's bought time with his legs and saved some first downs, several in fact. And then he's used Nick Jones to his very best advantage with a couple of touchdown tosses in the second quarter. One in the right corner of the end zone and one in the left. And then, here's the only mistake. That fumble a few moments ago led to Aaron Murray to Keith Marshall on a long pass and then the field goal moments ago that gives Georgia the three-point lead. Well, and this is where you count on his experience and his leadership to move on to the next play. Forget that one, get your team going again. He fakes the throw after the handoff to Mike Davis who only got a yard. Damian Swan from the corner. Made the hit. So midway through the third quarter, number six team in the country trailing number 11, 27-24. Three wide outs to Shaw's left. That's where he's looking right now. And throwing in a tight window and got it complete. Out across the 40, it's Nick Jones. He's been his favorite target. And Mike Davis is down in the South Carolina backfield. Davis in on pass protection on that play. Nice job by Connor Shaw. Reading the zone coverage and allowing that play to develop. Sometimes with a quarterback who likes to scramble, who makes plays with his legs, they don't always hang in the pocket and let the whole play develop. That time he did. We'll check on Mike Davis when we come back. 7.23 running third quarter. Georgia with a three-point lead. 27-24. Mike Davis stuck his nose in there on pass protection like you were talking about, Todd. Yeah, he's right here. He's going to slide over and get a nice pickup on Leonard Floyd, who's blitzing in the inside. Did his job, but uh, kind of paid the price for it. Yeah, he got the worst of it. Apparently okay on the sideline. First down, South Carolina at its own 40. Shaw, again, flares it out of the backfield. And Brandon Wilds, that play worked with Mike Davis a couple series ago, but that time it doesn't. Check in with Holly. Guys, Mike Davis will be able to return to this ball game. In fact, he's running out there right now. He just got hit on the elbow, all is well. So Wilds out, Davis in. Well, that play would have worked with Brandon Wilds, too, if it was a better throw. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to throw that ball high to a bat. You want to throw that ball right down around the numbers where he can catch it and get turned up field and not worry about reaching for a bad football. Shaw has a look at 
Coach Spurrier, and he's going to run the option, and he'll keep it. And he only got about a yard before the collision with Leonard Floyd. Actually, I think the two Georgia guys hit each other. Shaw kind of slid underneath the contact, and a couple Bulldogs got the worst of this one. Watch Shaw slide underneath when he knows he can't get any more yards, and three of them. Oof. It was a head-on collision with three Bulldogs. Big third down right here. South Carolina with a third and nine. They're 50% on the day on third down conversions. Nick Jones, the motion man, has been the big play receiver today for South Carolina. Georgia's going to bring a blitz. Shaw fires far side and incomplete. And Bruce Ellington, I think he see. lost it in the sun. That ball was well thrown. It was the correct read. And Bruce Ellington that's, completely lost it in the sun. That's exactly the angle he would have seen, actually, obviously out of the shadow there. Georgia came with the blitz. It was man coverage with a free safety, and he went to the right guy, and Ellington had no idea where the football was. What a break for Georgia. Lynn Swan used to tell me if the sun's in your eyes, catch the sun. <laughs> that time he didn't get his hands in the right spot. Mm -hmm. High punt again, a dandy. Going to try to return this one, and... Maybe got two yards out of it. Speaking of Swan, that's Damian Swan on the other end of the punt. Georgia will have the ball back on offense. A little over six remaining third quarter. ESPN College Football brought to you by Hyundai. New thinking, new possibilities. And Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football. Back in Athens, the SEC on ESPN. Brad Nessler with Ty Blackledge and Holly Rowe and our ESPN crew. Georgia leading by three. And Ugga, nine, enjoying the festivities so far. He's going to back up. It's nice and cool in the doghouse. A little bit warmer out in the sun. First down from the 18-yard line. High backfield with Todd Gurley on the handoff. Gurley broke one tackle. Didn't get away from the second one, J.T. Surratt, but he did get about six on the carry. And again, Georgia will go without a huddle. South Carolina Clowney's kind of limping off right now to the top of your screen, and he didn't make it off the field. I don't know if the officials didn't see that, yeah, or they well, don't they care. Threw a flag. Oh, they, they did. Threw a flag. Because he was still about two strides from the sideline. So that's going to give Georgia an automatic first down, I think. He had a guy step on his ankle in practice on Tuesday. I was over there on Wednesday, and he was hobbling around a little bit, but not missing too many reps. Substitution infraction. Defense number seven. Five drops from the previous spot. The result of the penalty is the first down. And again, I was mentioning it as he got over there about a stride away, very small stride, before Murray got the handoff to Gurley. And so an automatic first down for Georgia. And now he just winced in pain right there again on the sideline trying to walk it off. Meanwhile, Georgia's got a first down at the 29. Gurley hit at the line of scrimmage. Didn't get anything. Darius English and Sky Moore combined on the stop. They're really high on Sky Moore. They think he's got a very bright future. Freshman out of Cooper City, Florida. And really run, very instinctive player. Todd Gurley in his sophomore season has his 11th career 100-plus rushing game in this one. Murray, quick strike on a seam, and that probably should have been caught. Reggie Davis, true freshman out of Tallahassee, couldn't hold it. Now Davis getting... Some action in the game again because some of the injury problems at wide receiver. This is a perfectly thrown and perfectly timed pass and needs to be caught. I mean, that's another first down conversion on second down. And that should have been caught. Michael Bennett's been quiet today, too, as a wide receiver. Cloudy's back in there. Lining up on his right defensive end spot where he spent the majority of the day. Maybe all day, I guess, huh, Todd? Yeah, he hasn't moved anywhere other than there. Third down for Georgia and long. They're going to bring an extra body off the corner. Murray's going to throw that way and caught by Conley. 
Chris Conley went up high and got it. Pick up a 14. Well, because they showed this blitz early and it wasn't a quick count, Aaron Murray was able to know where the pressure was coming from, know where he had single coverage, and get the ball out there for the big conversion to Conley. They showed that blitz too soon, and Aaron Murray read it. So first down for the dogs. And now they give the fullback a little sugar, and that's Quavon Hicks. And Hicks carries people to midfield. Mark Rick loves Quavon Hicks. I mean, he, he thinks he, as a fullback, which is somewhat of a dying breed in football, they think Hicks, his skill set is the best that he's seen since William Floyd at Florida State. And a quick handoff and breaking through. Keith Marshall this time. Marshall down at a 40 and another Georgia first down. And the first and foremost thing that a fullback has to do in an eye formation offense is thump or block. And that's what Hicks loves to do. But he also has ball skills. Led that play for the first down. And Clowney goes out again. And with Clowney out, in comes Tim Gurley again in place of Marshall. Now Darius English also is in, and he's an edge rusher. He's a much smaller guy. He's 6'6", 226 pounds, doesn't have the bulk to stop the run like Clowney. And here he goes, the guy we just talked about. Quavon Hicks, 15 more yards and a first down. He's 6'2", 260 pounds. He was a defensive tackle or a nose guard in high school. That was easy. I mean, there wasn't even anybody in the hole to touch him. Georgia with a first down at the South Carolina 25. And now it's Gurley. And Gurley for five more, maybe six. Check in with Holly quickly. Jadavion Clowney on the bench, wincing in pain. He keeps grabbing the right arch and top of his right foot that was stepped on at practice on Tuesday. He was trying to get some oral medication in him, but he ran back out on the field before they could get it down him. So he is now back out sitting on the bench, and they are all examining him right now. There you see it. Thanks, Holly. Ninth play of the Georgia Drive as a second down at five coming up. And again, his replacement, English, is a much slighter guy. I'd run right at him. I would run right at number five and try to move his body out of there. Three remaining in the third. Georgia with a three-point lead. Looking for more. Toss sweep. Gurley that way. And Gurley driving. Close to a first down. Don't we have a flag down? We do indeed. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 86. Five drops from the previous spot. Remain second down. Justin Scott Wesley, the sophomore out of Camilla, Georgia. The guy with the uh, penalty, only the second penalty on Georgia today. But it backs him up to the 25-yard line again. Second down and 10. Murray looks to the sideline against South Carolina, brings up extra bodies at the line of scrimmage, and now backs it up. And they give it to J.J. Green, true freshman. See, the Georgia coaches are right next door to us. Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, is upstairs. So Aaron Murray is, they're, they're calling a play at the line of scrimmage. Then they're going up there and seeing what the defense lines up in, and then they're changing it. That's why we're getting down inside the five-second mark most of the time on the play clock. Clock. They're trying to get the absolute perfect call for the right defense. Third down and six. Murray, quick throw out on the flat. Got it to Michael Bennett. Finally, Michael Bennett, who we've been calling for today, has a catch, and it's a big one on third down. Beautiful block by Arthur Lynch, the tight end. He was out there, the lead blocker. You got to get the first guy blocked. Watch number 88. Get a block right there and enables Bennett to get up to the first down. He also gets a block downfield from Conley, but the Lynch block got him the first down. And it's first and goal for the Dogs just inside the 10. Gurley back in behind Quavon Hicks. Again, give the ball to three and see who wants to tackle him. This time they do a good job of gang tackling. Got a yard, maybe two. And Clowney coming back in, but he's got a hitch in his giddy up yeah, for does. sure. Well, he has one sack today. He's altered a few plays, but playing right now on a bad foot. Georgia's got a five-minute drive going, and if they close this out with a touchdown, 
They would be in good shape with a quarter to play. Well, Clowney replaced Chaz Sutton, so he's lined up on the left side now. The first time he's not lined up in his normal position. Gurley didn't even get a yard that time, I don't think. And Clowney was part of the tackle yeah, with Juan Lewis. He lined up on the opposite side for the first play of the game, and boy, did he explode into the block. Ran right by Arthur Lynch and was part of the tackle. Yeah, we got a Georgia player still down. I think it's uh, Canarius Gates, the left tackle, who normally would be blocking Clowney, but in that alignment, he was on the other side. Senior out of Grantville, Georgia, and they're going to work on him, and we'll check when we come back. That is not a good look for Georgia fans as Gates being helped off. He got rolled up on on that last play on the right knee. Going to see it on the left side of your screen. And that just happens in that yep. mess on the inside. And they have shuffled their offensive line through the preseason several times. And now Mark Beard is going to be in that spot, I guess. And Colton Houston will stay on the right side. I thought maybe they'd flip flop those two. At any rate. Georgia's got a huge third down. 13th play of the drive. And I know they don't want to settle for three. And we'll see if South Carolina can get a stop here. And Clowney is still on the left defensive end working against Colton Houston now. Aaron Murray in the shotgun. Rolls to his right. Wants to throw it to the end zone and does. And got him. Todd Gurley. Touchdown. The third touchdown pass of the game for Aaron Murray. Aaron Murray is not as prone to leave the pocket as Connor Shaw, but he is certainly capable of extending plays that way. A beautiful job eluding J.T. Surratt and Jadavian Clowney, and a nice adjustment on the scramble by Todd Gurley. That is the first receiving touchdown of Todd Gurley's Georgia career and it was a huge one with 18 seconds remaining in the third quarter Aaron Murray is going to feel pressure from his right Clowney and Surratt he buys time and Gurley did a beautiful job of that wasn't the intended route but when he saw his quarterback scramble he broke out towards the sideline and Murray was able to hit him for the touchdown so Murray's hit both of his tailbacks Marshall and now Gurley for scoring tosses and he got planted as he let go of the football but he knew that it was in the hands of Gurley in the end zone they don't hurt nearly as much when you know there's a touchdown <laughs> on the other end exactly well that is 98 career touchdown passes thrown by Aaron Murray Peyton Manning at 89 Danny Warfel a Heisman Trophy winner at 114 with Steve Spurrier at Florida and so he moves up the all-time list. He's the all-time Georgia leader. He's still got Eric Zier and David Green to catch as far as yardage totals. But today, win or lose, I think he's kind of exercised the demons yeah. of playing against South Carolina. Don't you agree? He's played a he's played a really nice game so far. Now they got a big quarter to play. Yep. But so far he has uh, played admirably. Barber to kick. John Carson on the other end will have a chance at this one from the three yard line. Carson stood up at the 20 and down he goes right there. Nice job by the Bulldogs special teams as we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, time for an innovative look brought to you by AT&T. Notre Dame and Michigan on ABC tonight in the Irish opener against Temple. Watch how beautifully Tommy Reese orchestrates the offense. Safety jumps the underneath route leaving one on one with Devaris Daniels and Right in the middle of the end zone, the touchdown pass. Reese threw for 346 yards in the opener. We'll see him take on the Wolverines tonight. That we will later on this evening. Right now, we got an afternoon ball game that has turned into evening. A lot of shadows on the field at Sanford Stadium between the hedges. Big shadow over Connor Shaw right now. Can he bring his team back from 10 down? And it's Davis getting to the corner. Davis down the sideline. Mike Davis. He might go all the way. Finally brought down around the five. 
And again, showing speed that a lot of people didn't think he had. What a huge run. Well, a couple guys got caught taking bad angles to the football. Trey Matthews, number 28, and Josh Harvey Clemens, both underestimated the speed of Mike Davis. A 74-yard romp has put South Carolina in business to start the fourth quarter when we return. 34-24, another 75-yard run by Mike Davis, second in two weeks, Todd. Well, you're going to see two guys for Georgia that take bad angles to the football. As they pursue this play, watch what happens to freshman Trey Matthews and sophomore Josh Harvey Clemens. They both underestimate the speed of Mike Davis, take bad angles to the football, and he's able to turn the corner. And that's something that Georgia worked specifically on this week, taking better angles. That time, it didn't work. His first 75-yarder was a touchdown against North Carolina. His second has set up his team first and goal at the Georgia 5. Shaw gives it to him again. And a tough two, maybe two and a half. Ramik Wilson made the stop. Nice thing for Davis after that long run, the quarter ended. He had a chance yeah, to catch right. his breath. Catch his breath. Last week in the Clemson win over Georgia, this is the part of the field where they utilize Taj Boyd, the quarterback, as a runner. Davis in the middle of the pile, and not much there, if anything. It'll be third and goal. I don't think we have to stress too much that this is the biggest third down of the game. And the Georgia defense and the fans are aware of that. Shaw moves his tight end Adams over on the right flank. And he's going to run that way and pitch it to Davis, who cuts back inside, and he's in. Touchdown, South Carolina. Tough run. Great second effort by Mike Davis. Really great decision by Davis to turn his shoulders straight ahead and plow his way into the end zone. If he tries to take this all the way to the corner, I don't think he makes it. But watch him make the decision to square up and just try to drive through arm tackles into the end zone. Power running by Mike Davis at the goal line. I don't think they're going to say Marcus who in Columbia, but he's done a pretty good imitation yeah. of Marcus Lattimore, who's a San Francisco 49er now. Marcus is probably watching this game if he can, and I'm pretty sure he's proud of number 28 and what he's done today. Big touchdown, capping an 80-yard drive. Extra point is wide left. It's a bad snap. The snap was low. It was bobbled briefly. And they weren't able to get it down cleanly. And I think Steve's face tells the entire story right there. Ryan Culbertson is the snapper. Patrick Fish is the holder. And you think this is supposed to be automatic? Well, it's not. A huge play right there. Now South Carolina knows they'll need a touchdown. The DirecTV drive to the National Championship Mobile Studio has been traveling across the country following the biggest stories in college football. A mobile studio right here in Athens, Georgia today. TJ with a little honk. It's almost a home game for TJ. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You're out the bus this morning. It's my guy, TJ Tart. One of the best. Think about special teams plays today. Georgia wrist an onside kick, took it in for points. They dropped a punt snap, right. South Carolina turned that into points. And now South Carolina, on a bad snap, a bad hold, and a bad kick, are four points behind instead of three here in the fourth quarter. Landed hard to kick. Justin Scott Wesley waits way down on the other end. He's going to have a chance at this one from the two. And he's not going to make the 20. Let's check in with Holly. Georgia's weapons on offense have gone down. Canarius Gates, their starting left tackle, is out for now with a right foot injury. They were examining the top of his foot and his ankle. 
and his knee. He's got two big backs of ice on either side of his knee. But even a bigger story, Keith Marshall, they're running back, the backup to Todd Gurley, a left knee bruise. They have fitted him with a little brace that goes under the kneecap, and he's walking gingerly here on the sideline, not sure if he can return. That looks like he won't, Holly. Thank you. That means more pressure on Todd Gurley to carry the load, not that he hasn't already. Dogs just outside their own 18-yard line with a four-point lead. Murray, quarterback draw or a broken play? I don't know what that was. That looked like a draw. Aaron actually ran more as a freshman, and they tried to reel him in a little bit. He makes some big plays, but uh, they wanted him to stay in the pocket more often, and we've seen very few runs out of him in his senior season so far. But he did lose about 10 pounds in the offseason, dropped his body fat, wanted to be quicker. But he's had a sensational game to this point. But he's still got a long ways to go. And he's going to be flushed and wants to throw on the run here, too. And it just looks like confusion on that side of the ball the last couple of plays. Just weird looking. Well, that was supposed to be a quick throw that wasn't there. And South Carolina with two good plays on first and second down, forcing a third and long. Aaron Murray wanted to throw that quick. It wasn't there and tried to extend the play with a scramble. And if South Carolina could get a three and out here, momentum might, even though they're behind, momentum could be shifting a little bit their way. Third down and eight. Murray and a shotgun. Gurley with him. Four wide receivers for Georgia. South Carolina thinking about a blitz. And now they think there was motion. And there was a flag. I think this is going to be on Georgia. For the snap. False start. Offense number three. Five drop penalty from the previous spot. Still third down. Well, they say Todd Gurley jumps early. I think it could have been anybody on the offensive yeah. line, too, on that side. It was a long snap count, and that's kind of hard to, to hold in there. Remember Aaron Murray on the last drive came up with some big plays on third down. He's got a handful here, that's for sure. Third down and 13. He hasn't made any mistakes today so far either. He doesn't want to do it here. Murray flushed out of the pocket by Clowney. Throws on the run down the sideline. Man wide open. And it's... Justin Scott Wesley, and he's gone! Touchdown, Georgia! An 85-yarder for Aaron Murray. He hasn't left the pocket as much as Connor Shaw today, but when he has, it has paid off big dividends for him. He threw the touchdown pass to Gurley when he was flushed out by Clowney. He's flushed out again, and he throws a deep touchdown pass. Big plays off the of scrambles. Patrick Bielis with a point after. It's good. 13 minutes to play, and Georgia has taken an 11-point lead. And they do it on the right arm of senior quarterback Aaron Murray. His fourth touchdown pass of the day. Presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Toyota Care. Caring for you and your car. The Georgia faithful lit up with a 41-30 lead here in the fourth quarter. And Aaron Murray, four touchdown passes to four different receivers. Yeah. Without his favorite target, who was hurt the first game, Malcolm Mitchell. Just a brilliant performance so far by Aaron Murray. Spreading the ball around, reading the coverage, playing with poise, leaving the pocket when he needs to, and making big plays outside of the pocket. And how about six out of seven on third down passing, including that third and 13 that went for 85 yards and a touchdown. As the shadows cover the field here between the hedges, Sean Carson takes the kick at the goal line. Got the corner, 
Across the 25, bounced out of bounds around the 27-yard line, and Todd takes us back to the touchdown. Well, it was a great play by Murray, but a mistake by South Carolina. Now, this right here is T.J. Gurley. The reason he's playing is because safety Kadetrix Marcus separated his shoulder in the North Carolina game. The corner, Ahmad Christian, thinks he's going to have help from the safety. He turns loose the outside receiver, where Scott Wesley, and the safety wasn't there to help. And that was a miscommunication between the backup safety, Gurley, and the corner, Christian. Third down and long, you never turn somebody loose down the sideline like that. Now can the other senior quarterback rally his game cuts? Connor Shaw and his team down 11. And he comes up firing on the far sideline, almost intercepted over there by... Brendan Langley as Connor Shaw sort of hung that one up there yeah. for Demir Bird. Well, that was a long throw because they're on the left hash and they were throwing to the right sideline. So just as you said, that ball stays in the air a long time and that enabled Langley to make a play on it. They've picked on him the entire game, but that time Langley was in position to make a play on the ball. Connor Shaw, whose three losses as a starter have come on the road, has only hit one of his last six passes. He hits this one, though, perfectly, and it's Shaq Rowland. Is that his first catch of the I day? I think so. 16-yard pickup. Very, very quiet. I expected him to be much more involved in the offense. He's got single coverage on Langley. Good read and throw by Connor Shaw. He was the player of the year in the state of South Carolina a couple of years ago. Highly touted wide receiver, but only caught five balls last year. And that's his first one today, but it's good for a first down. Gamecocks at their own 43-yard line as we're under 12 and a half minutes. Shaw, plenty of time. Fires near sideline. High catch made by Shaq Rowland again. And another first down. What Rowland did a nice job of here, again, working on Langley, is he used his body to stay between the defender and the ball. Watch him kind of box out like a basketball rebounder and then go up high and catch it at its high point. So South Carolina's got something working here. Shaw in the gun from the 44. Back to the ground, and this one will be back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it for Brandon Wilds. Don't forget, when we're done, coming up later tonight, Notre Dame and Michigan, the big house. Number 14 and number 17 tangling tonight at 8 on ESPN. And also watch ESPN. I think the pictures in that promo, that's where Brady Hope <laughs> called him a chicken, right? For, that's for right. not playing him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian Kelly sort of changed his tune on how big yeah. a rivalry it was, too, about midweek. This is a pretty good rivalry. South Carolina's owned it the last three years. Georgia in the lead here, and Shaw comes up firing to Roland. His third catch on this drive, and he's got it inside the 25-yard line. The reason I thought that last score by Georgia was so important is I think if either team is more susceptible to fatigue here in the fourth quarter, it's Georgia. South Carolina played on a Thursday night. They had two extra days of rest and recovery. Georgia played on the road at night and didn't get back from Clemson here to Athens until after 3 in the morning. So at this point in the game, if either team is going to be fatigued, Georgia is more susceptible. Gamecocks at the Dogs 25. Shaw set the fire again and now running to his left, looking for people to help him with a block. And he gets good yardage. Picked up about six before he's run out of bounds. But again, that score was so critical because when it was a four-point game and it was just one score away, that fatigue could have really been a factor with the running game of South Carolina, just trying to grind it out. But that touchdown makes it two scores, and South Carolina can't just pound the football running it. They're going to have to score twice and mix run and pass. Shaw had 14 carries last year against Georgia. He's got 14 more for 70 yards here today. Going to throw a middle screen to Davis. Davis runs right past his blockers and past the Georgia defenders as well. And he's got it first and goal at the eight-yard line. And the guy that helped on the tackle looks a little bit gassed, as Bob was just talking about, and that's Herrera, the linebacker. Mike Davis is a much better football player than I anticipated that he was. He ran for 115 yards in the opener last week, but he also had a long run uh, to kind of set that up. But he looks good. Gamecocks first and goal at the Georgia 8. Shaw pumps and now keeps it. 
Whatever he saw, he decided the better of it and tried to get back to the line of scrimmage. Sterling Bailey put him down there. I think they were trying to go outside to their tight end. They had him lined up. Second and goal. South Carolina from the nine. Shaw, quarterback draw all the way this time, and Shaw is down to the three. And a hush over the crowd here at Sanford Stadium. Well, and you're, you're wondering if Steve Spurrier now, he knows he's got to score twice. If they score a touchdown, they'll go for two to try to make it a three-point game. If they don't get it in here, does he go ahead and take the three right now? I think he probably will. We're about ready to find out. Third and goal. Davis inside. And man, that whole pile moved a lot closer to the goal line than I thought it was going to. Again, uh, th that looks like a tired looking defense a little bit. Now they're going to mark him just short. And because it's just inside the one, I think now Steve might go for it. And again, an extra surge there by Davis. And his helmet actually got to the goal line. The football didn't. And this might be the whole ball of wax right here. Fourth and a foot. Now remember, they've had a couple high snaps. They can't afford a high snap right here from Clayton Statnick. Shaw in the gun. On the option, the pitch. They didn't get there. Georgia with a goal line stand. Penalty marker at the end of the play. After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 56 on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, it was a dead ball foul, so the ball still belongs to the Bulldogs, but they're inside their one-yard line. So Steve Spurrier gambled on fourth down. The snap was a little bit high, but I don't think it disrupted the timing of the play. Just a nice job by Herrera maintaining leverage forcing it back inside and making a solid tackle. Todd Grantham's defense comes up with a big stop and Steve Spurrier disgusted. No foul. It was a dead ball foul and here's Made that call. You'll see number 56 just come in and well, just jump on somebody, I guess. And that makes it half the distance yeah. of the goal. And as Todd said, they're inside their own one yard line. If I'm Georgia, I give it to Quavon Hicks and say, go get us a couple because they're in a bad spot right here. <laughs> Gurley's the tailback. Bad spot for Georgia's offense inside their own one yard line. They'll move Lynch the tight end and try to draw. Clowney and company off. Clowney thinks it's on Georgia. Georgia thinks yeah. they did pull him off. Georgia moved first. Ball start. Offense. Number 64. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Now, I agree with you. I would have just given it to the fullback on first down and maybe on second down tried to use the snap count. But not on that first down play. You just don't want to take any chances inside your one yard line. I mean, that football can't get any closer without touching the goal line. You might have to quarterback sneak this one. Again, same formation. Murray trying to draw him off again. Gurley in the end zone trying to bring it out. And he maybe got to the two. That's about it. South Carolina electing to go for the touchdown on that fourth down. And then playing the percentages that, hey, if we miss it, there's still eight minutes left in the game. And if our defense can get a stop here, we'll get the ball back in really good field position. Now Georgia does have a, just a little bit of breathing room, Ledge, at the two-yard yeah. line. And the danger of South Carolina trying to bunch up there, if Gurley breaks a tackle, right. he might go 99 yards for a touchdown. 
They fake it to him, and the pass is to Hicks, the fullback wide open, and rumbling out to the 25. 23-yard pickup on his quarterback to the fullback. Nice call. Second down, you got a little breathing room on the girly run, so you fake it to him and slip the lead blocker out into the flat. And again, we see the skills of Hicks with the ball in his hands after the catch. Seventh different receiver Aaron Murray is used today. And Georgia in a huddle right now for one of the few times today because they know that the clock is one of their allies right now. If they can keep drives going, 309 yards and four touchdowns for Aaron Murray and a first down at the 25-yard line. Todd Gurley, and he did almost break into the secondary. And T.J. Gurley made the tackle. Well, I think it's just, even though Marshall is hurt and you got to go one more down the depth chart if you give this guy a break, I think you got to feed it to Gurley as, as much as he can run it right now because, again, he's a difficult guy to tackle in short yardage type situations. He takes care of the football and, uh, and you trust him. And then if you want to go play action and try to throw the football, that's set up pretty well too. Second and short. A yard to go at the 34-yard line. And it's Hicks, and he's got the first down, and he's taking Gamecocks with him for the ride. T.J. Gurley holding on, but the big 260-pounder has got another first down. Very similar to the LSU fullback that we saw last week, J.C. Copeland. Yeah. They're powerful. They were defensive linemen in high school. And Hicks was actually here at Georgia for their football camp, and he was recruited as a defensive lineman. They didn't think he was tall enough to play defensive tackle or nose tackle. And the offensive coaches said, hey, we'll take him as a fullback. <laughs> and he can play fullback. He's going to get a breather, and they'll bring in Merritt Hall, the other fullback. And they're blessed to have a couple of good ones. Hall's a good one as well. First and 10, Georgia, and we're under six minutes. Gurley got away from Clowney, cuts back to the inside, and picked up three more. Well, what a drive. Inside their one-yard line. They get the, the tough couple of yards by Gurley, then the play-action pass, and now they're almost to midfield. And now with Gurley coming out, and Keith Marshall being banged up, as Holly told us, they're going to bring in Brendan Douglas, I think just to play in the Georgia backfield for a play or so. Well, and the biggest thing Douglas has to be aware of, having not carried the ball much in this game, he's got to take care of the football. Be secure with it. And a freshman out of Augusta, Georgia. And he's in there in the Georgia eye on second and seven. Puts both hands around the ball and breaks free and runs over a couple of would-be tacklers. How about that? Look at the smile on Gurley's face. This is just power running. Great blocking at the point of attack. Dallas Lee, who had the penalty on first down, pulled around and got a key block on the power play. And look at the ball security. Cover it up. Keep it high and tight. Lower the shoulder and a fresh set of legs. Gets a big first down for Georgia. Wow. To the 40-yard line. And we talked about the possible fatigue of the Georgia defense. This South Carolina defense showing signs of fatigue right now. Douglas stays in there, gets another carry, and again wraps both arms around it. And still going for a tough three more. I didn't expect to see number 22 too much today, but has he ever shown here in the fourth quarter with just over four to play? This drive started with 8.28 left, and now it's the eighth play of the drive, and they moved it from their own one foot line down to the South Carolina 37. And the thing is, Georgia doesn't need points here. They, they would be just perfectly content to keep eating clock and making a couple first downs and put all the pressure on the South Carolina offense. Second down and seven. Lynch, the tight end in motion in the dog's backfield. And Douglas has to follow his blockers for another two. And right now, if Douglas stays in, what he has to be thinking is, Protect the football, and if I feel like I can't get any more yards, go down. Because the longer he stays up, guys are going to come in and try to strip the ball out. Get what you can get, 
and then get down to the ground. You got a senior quarterback who has basically played a flawless game. Do you let him throw one here on third and five? His third down has been his best down. I think you do. I really do. I, I would have total trust in Aaron Murray right now because his decision making through this entire game has been outstanding. He's a great preparation guy. That's what Mark Rick and Mike Bobo both told us about him. He prepares as hard as well as anybody they've ever had. And he'll know what to do with the football here if they say to give him the green light to throw it. Going to wind that clock down as low as he can. Third down and five. They're going to keep it on the ground. Toss sweep to Douglas. He didn't get there. He's about two yards shy. But as you mentioned, when they when South Carolina was stopped on fourth and one, there was over eight minutes left in the ball game. Now, as Georgia looks at a fourth and two, there's two and a half minutes left in the game. And we've got a timeout. South Carolina stops it with 237 Time remaining. Out. Big fourth down when we South come back. Carolina. It's their first time out of the second half. With the clock operator, please reset the only one has been. Georgia with a fourth down and a couple. Todd Gurley back in at tailback. If they get to the 30-yard line, they get a first down and continue to use clock until South Carolina stops it with another timeout. And now we have everything stopped. Georgia timeout. takes timeout. Georgia. It's the first time out of the half. A little bit unique. It's a good 30-second yeah. timeout. Well, it's time to tell you about our Discover card game changer. And if there was anybody better on the football field today than number 11, I haven't seen him. Aaron Murray to Arthur Lynch, his first touchdown of the day. And then out in the flat, Keith Marshall, who got some great blocking, scored in the corner. And then decided to get his other tailback involved. First scoring reception for Todd Gurley. And then moments ago, huge play down the sideline to Justin Scott Wesley. Good for 85 yards and a touchdown. And Aaron Murray, who had four touchdowns two years ago in this game, but that was a 45-42 loss. This one, they're two minutes away from having a huge win. Yeah. Well, and again, that, that thing that he's trying to erase, that mark on his career, his brilliant Georgia career, couldn't win in the big games against ranked opponents. Has an opportunity to lead his team here. Fourth down, they've had eight runs and one pass. I would expect run number nine here. Especially with number three in there. And there's the toss to Gurley. If he gets the first down, and he does, George is going to keep the drive moving. And Arthur Lynch leading the way. His tight end just gives him a shove in the chest. Well, well a huge day for number three. Gurley got a nice three-play break on the sideline to catch his wind, to get a drink, and when he came back in for this play, he had pressure-looking legs, and he's able to turn the corner. Nice block from his right guard, Chris Burnett. And he lost a tire along the way, yeah. so he's going to put his shoe back on, and Douglas will come back in at the tailback spot. Lock's going to wind its way down around two minutes here. Murray at the very last second gives it to Hicks, the fullback, and he's just holding on to the football for dear life. Maybe got a yard. You know, the one thing that I really like more about the Georgia offense than the South Carolina offense, they both have good players, good schemes. I like that Georgia can run a lot of their offense under center. They get those short yardage situations. They take the snap right at the line of scrimmage and hand the ball off to a back. South Carolina is exclusively out of the shotgun when they were fourth and one on the one yard line they went when option. they took the snap they were six yards away from the goal line it's just it's a real handicap I think at that part of the field Brendan Douglas tossed sweep to the near side and he bulldozes his way down near the 20 you see Hicks number 48 right in front of him what a Luxury to have yeah. a guy that can just bulldoze people and open up holes. Well, not only that can, but that is willing to and likes to. I mean, he likes to block. He likes to put his face on people. And that is, uh, you just don't find those guys. Plus, he's got a cool face mask. That is <laughs> sweet. You can't wear those in the NFL without special permission and, anymore starting this year. And you can't wear that if you're not... A, a thumper if That's you're right. not somebody that really is going <laughs> to knock people around. I mean, it just wouldn't fit.
Gurley delayed handoff. Looked like he didn't think he was going to get it. And got a couple out of it. That was a strange looking play. Yeah. But we're down to 35 seconds. And the old ball coach, I guess, isn't going to stop this game. George is going to start, though, to celebrate. Three straight years, South Carolina's had their number. And today, the number is George's 41 to 30. Georgia ran off the final eight and a half minutes of the ball game to win it. And the only undefeated SEC East teams right now are Missouri and Tennessee. <laughs> How about that? That's a little strange. And Connor Shaw will have to live with this one, too. Another road loss. His fourth.